I need a scary scene to unravel. Uh-huh. This scene raised the hairs on my neck when I watched it first, so I had to work out how Mohamed Diab, the director, did it. This scene stands out in so many ways, from incredible acting, nuanced cinematography, intricate sound design, and so much more, to make it one of the most terrifying and entertaining scenes of the first episode of Moon Knight. The elevator as a location represents so many ideas all at once. An escape method, but also a claustrophobic prison. A protective shield, but with a door you cannot control. No wonder directors love this fear-inducing space. But in Moon Knight, this isn't just a normal elevator. Oh no, no, no. This is a space which has been designed to reinforce the scene perfectly. A small but important detail is the red colour of light in the button controls. This stands out in an otherwise dark and tonally brown set as quite vibrant and even ominous. Most elevators don't use red buttons as this is generally left for the emergency stop instead. So apart from it being a subtle omen, the contrasting light does help to give us a sense of the size of the elevator, which is important to help the character feel trapped. So without this light, it would be far more difficult for us to understand the size of the space. Next, we notice the double mirror, which most elevators don't have, as this can cause normal passengers to feel quite uncomfortable. Later, I'm going to show you how specific use of an incredibly powerful camera technique enhances this feeling without us even realizing. Back to that double mirror then. It makes the space in the elevator feel larger, right? But it's also there for more than just that. It would have been easy just to stick to a standard elevator design with just one mirror, but doubling the mirror means that Diab can add a psychological element to this tense scene. By doubling the mirror, you create an infinite tunnel of reflections, which gives the audience the sense of looking into the character. You see, mirrors represent a window into a character's mind, and as we see throughout Moon Knight, Diab makes us look into reflections and mirrors in almost every scene. Mirrors also have a rich cinematic history, being used to visually represent the psychology of characters, like in Black Swan, utilized mirrors throughout the film to show the fractured psychosis of the protagonist's mind. Mirrors are a powerful visual, which means when our protagonist leans up against that fabulous infinity mirror in the elevator, we intrinsically know there could be more lurking in the reflections. Steven, stop looking. The other half of the set design here is the deceptively simple corridor outside the elevator. This unnaturally dark corridor has a singular window which lets in almost no light. And to accentuate that darkness, they use dark walls and flooring. This dark corridor is perfect to create a foreboding atmosphere as Steven tries to escape, but this wouldn't work at all without brilliant lighting design. Diab implements classic horror lighting design in this scene with spotlighting down the corridor and high contrast lighting in the elevator. As you can see, the ceiling lights are on, yet they seem unable to properly light the corridor. This is awful for the functionality of the building, but tremendous to enhance tension. Diab creates large pools of darkness similar to Tim Burton's 1989 Batman, which allows him to specifically withhold information from the audience. So when the corridor starts to go a bit exorcist and the lights flash on and off, due to the dark set design, the light doesn't disperse too much, keeping most of the environment hard to see. Diab understands the success of this whole scene hinges upon utilizing the darkness to engage our imagination. This is where the magic really happens. Diab has interestingly chosen to break a golden rule in cinema to evoke a powerful feeling in the audience. The 180 degree rule is when the camera is kept on one side of the character. This means they always look in the same direction. This is designed so that the audience can understand where people are in relation to one another, and is used throughout cinema and TV, from car chases to fight scenes and even just normal conversations. However, rules are made to be broken, and Diab does so to disorientate the audience much like the protagonist, putting us in his shoes for this terrifying scene. Diab also breaks another rule by jumping through focal lengths. Now, what do I mean? 
Normally, when filming a scene, the director will ensure to film a version of the scene on a wide lens to make sure the geography of the space is fully captured. Then the camera is moved in to capture a medium shot, revealing more detail of the actor's body language and movements. Finally, we reach the close-up shots, highlighting the actor's facial expressions and small details. This method of filming ensures the audience feels like they naturally get closer to the characters over time. So what happens if you take away that medium shot? Well, if you cut between the wide and the close-up, you shock the audience because you jump into the personal space of the character without first warming the audience into it. And this is exactly what Diab has chosen to do. In fact, he's been just as thorough with his sound design, which I'll get back to in a little bit. Diab keeps us in close-up shots for the majority of this scene to give the sense of claustrophobia. But as soon as the elevator doors open each time, he cuts out to an extreme wide shot. But the framing communicates much more than just the geography of the new floor Stephen has arrived on. As you can see, Stephen has been placed in the bottom left half of the screen, signaling subconsciously that he is feeling powerless in this moment. This wide shot is one of the few static shots in the entire scene, which juxtaposes against the consistent use of handheld shots up to this moment, which kind of feels quite creepy. The next time the doors open on the elevator and we cut to that wide shot, they've used an even wider lens, making Stephen almost a third smaller, which emphasizes that feeling of weakness. This might seem ultra subtle, but it effectively increases his weakness against the forces around him. Additionally, he's now framed in the center of the screen, which along with the darkness all around him, isolates him in the elevator, turning the safe space into a target. Any self-discerning horror aficionado knows that horror films are only as good as the sound design and composing put into them. So, sound is responsible for half of the storytelling process, and Diab has utilized sound design in this scene to crank the anxiety up to 100. I want to acknowledge there are loud, large elements used in the sound design, which are great, but I think the subtler sound design choices make the scene truly special. The elevator has a particularly loud and hard sound every time the doors close. This sound seems to reverberate through the entire building and have the effect of jolting the audience. This tricks the audience into expecting the sound and a jump scare to come along with it at some point. This is a brilliant diversionary tactic to ensure we are not ready for what he really has in store for us. Adding more texture to the character's internal journey is the subtle use of unintelligible whispers and even the subtler sound of wind in a tunnel. Of course, we know this to be impossible as there's no one else around and we're inside a building, but this causes us to question if this could all be inside his head. This effect ties in particularly well with the dramatic arc, which I'll be exploring a little later in the episode. Another sound, which is such a lovely choice, is the screeching elevator doors, which are just a hair's breadth away from being screams of agony. Of course, the screeches are then abruptly cut off with the overwhelming slam of the elevator doors, but they are no less unnerving each time Stephen tries to escape to another floor. Finally, I love the use of an ambulance siren just before the final dramatic twist of the scene. This serves two purposes. First, we associate the sound of a siren with anxiety, as the sound is designed to warn us that an emergency has happened. But also, it leads into a brilliant jump cut in the scene, as Stephen finds himself on a bus on a street where we might have actually heard that sound. In fact, you can also hear the hiss of a bus's brakes just before the jump as well. horror film worth its salt doesn't have a good jump scare. The only way to achieve a good jump scare, though, is to convince the audience of one idea without letting them know that you are winding up for a big punch just behind them. To achieve this, Diab has broken the scene into five distinct beats. He's terrified and tries to escape the exorcist event happening in his apartment. The tension and anxiety is super high. He arrives on a deserted floor. Still nervous, he tries to command the elevator again to go to the ground floor. This quiet serves to give us a false sense of security, but feels unnervingly quiet. 
approached by a paranormal being only to be replaced with a harmless granny on her way to see her friend. We think he is all but doomed, but when the paranormal being is replaced by the scared granny, it makes us think that maybe this might all be in his head. Confused and questioning his reality, we all think the worst has passed. Surprise! The safety is a lie and the paranormal being finally reaches him and we smash cut and he screams out in terror. Diab has effectively directed a horrific scene which pulls us brilliantly through terror and intrigue, utilising all the tools at his fingertips. This is just one of the excellent scenes from episode 1 of a very promising new series, so watch out for more dissections in the coming weeks.